I am live actually right now in the In It kitchen in the southern area of the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm joined by my guest or our guest, Dr. John Phillips, is somewhere out in the field over in the Midwest, <laughs> over in Ohio. <laughs> but I'm actually, here I'm in, in Kentucky. <laughs> With Kevin Brown. I'm going to call him Chef Kevin Brown. He's the founder and CEO or co-founder and CEO of Init, which is a food innovation platform. Um, and we're going to be cooking a healthier Thanksgiving Day feast because, Dr. John, I don't know if you know, I was I was using Dr. Google today in a search to find out how many calories we consume on Thanksgiving Day, which is not necessarily artery healthy, right? Not good for your weight, not good for the inflammation in your body, all of the above. And yeah, it was saying it, that we could no, consume between 3,000 and more than 6,000 calories on just this one day, three to four times what is typical or suggested for us to be eating. But here's the kicker. This is my favorite part, is that one cheat date a year, and you know none of us cheat more than one day a year. But one cheat <laughs> yeah, right, day a year, right, right, right. <laughs> Right, of more right. than 3,000 calories to 6,000 calories, actually, unless you have allergies to the food, really won't make a difference or negatively impact your health. What do you think? You know, I, I would tend to agree. I, the What did you say about 3,000 to 6,000 calories? I, I, that's probably conceivable given the fact that a lot of times folks may be eating two meals. Uh, they're starting to eat a lot earlier. They might have uh, Recording you know, dessert dessert that they wouldn't have normally. So, I mean, yeah, yes, enjoy it. A couple of cheat days aren't going to hurt you. Again, my theory is moderation, kind of the 90-20, 90-10 rule, 90% of the time, eat right, 10%, maybe not so right. Life is short. you got to enjoy it and you've got to eat good food. That's healthy too. Yeah. And so what we decided, you know, as we were trying to figure out, um, you know, we want things that people are probably going to stick to. That, they, you know, little substitutions that people can make that won't change their family traditions. Maybe it'll create a new healthier tradition, but it shouldn't change, in a sense, the flavor of your favorite family recipe. Um, or it might even make it just a little bit better and you can create all new traditions. But we tried to make it simple and pick um, some of the most um, popular side dishes in particular like the green bean casserole um, mashed potatoes um, dishes in particular like the gravy which is really um we're getting a little feedback there sorry about that um if we're on a zoom link so if everyone yep, can we're live we're moved, live <laughs> we are live it's always live and we have actually always a live studio audience um that we is do. that is here and you know you can always email me kym at the way to my heart.org if you ever want to join the live studio audience every single saturday um but we, since we do have a live studio audience every once in a while someone will unmute and we get to hear um things that or, or, or someone might might order uh, french fries through a drive through <laughs> <laughs> that's actually happened that has happened yes our good awesome. friend douglas he may make an appearance at some point Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. No, I'm excited to I'm, I'm excited to kick this show off. I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun um, uh, le figuring out what you guys are doing and how you're how you're making it healthy. I mean, you've got a knife, so I'm, I'm I assuming do. you that's know how to favorite. use that. <laughs> so that's good. And Kevin is uh, looks like he's really you know knows his way around the kitchen. So I'm, I'm super stoked. Just saying to Kevin that, wow, I'd enjoy cooking so much more if I had a knife like this. It's just sailing right through everything. And what were you saying that at the end of is that a really is that a shoon? That looks like a shoon knife. Those are yeah, those are is. sweet knives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I I know that he's itching to get started. We have things brewing behind us. I have things that are already chopped over here. So I think that we need to start off with a little moment of inspiration before we start cooking. Dr. John Phillips, spectacular, vascular moment of inspiration. Again, never gets old. I was looking for a kind of a fun little Thanksgiving quote, and I found this one from Sam Lefkowitz. I don't know who Sam is, but I like it. When asked if my cup is half full or half empty, 
my only response is that I am thankful I have a cup. And I think it's important that we do not forget to be thankful for all that we have, big or big and small, on this day. Well, this Thursday. It's interesting, and maybe um, this might be something to Dr. Google as as we're talking, but um, when you are in a state of mind of gratefulness or thankfulness, it actually attracts more things to be grateful for and be thankful for because you can't help but feel good in that moment where you are thankful for something. And so one of the things that is a tradition in my family is we always, as we're celebrating our, our feast, is we always go around the table and no matter how you know poorly we're feeling um, or what's going on in our lives, the stress, anxiety, whatever it might be, for those few moments that we're sitting there, having that moment of, of thankfulness or gratefulness is really powerful. So I'm curious for you, Dr. John, what are you most thankful for? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. We do the same thing at our house. Uh, we go around the table. Uh, you know, I guess I'm just thankful that, well, my dad died, you know, in May. And so that was something that, you know, you're not really thankful for. But in no. retrospect, it was kind of the best thing. The, it, it was the best thing that could have happened in, those, in that situation. And um, I'm thankful that he's not suffering anymore I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll say that so but you know and I'm also thankful that there's positives that have come of it because now my mom's moving to Ohio and some other oh, family sure. members are as well yeah so I mean wow. I, the world you know again you, you get lemons you make lemonade and you just kind of take it one day at a time you stack days together you get a week you get a month you get a year and so I'm just thankful another I've had one more trip around the sun <laughs> So, yeah. What do you think? Exactly. For? And we're thankful for you. I mean, we were on the phone this week a couple of times and you were in the middle of saving the piggies. Of, and I'm sure your dad's just looking down so proud of you. Um, just wow. being able to save life and limb for so many people and having an impact. Um, well, you likewise. And, and, you know, again, I'm thankful for you, Kim, uh, and what you do. It's uh, it's amazing the reach that, that you have. And the fact, I think you had mentioned to me that there's there are doctors that are coming to you asking to be a part of the group as opposed to you, uh, you know, seeking physicians out now. So uh, it just speaks to what you're able to do and, and the network that you have created and the patients that you're helping. And then the patients that are helping other patients too. So that's, that's the beauty of it. So I'll, my hope is that when we do this next year, I'll be cooking and, you know, we'll have a huge audience that even bigger than we have now. So keep up the good work. Before we go to break, what would you be cooking? What would be the go-to dish for you to be cooking next year? Uh, you know, I'm I'm a traditionalist. I do turkey, and um, uh, we'll get a fresh turkey. I actually ice the breast down to uh, kind of help with the cooking time, and because that's the I think turkey when cooked well can be fantastic, but you know it's a thin margin of error there because it gets pretty dry, and then no one likes it. So that would that, I'm a traditionalist. Welcome back to The Heart of Innovation. For more on today's topic, go to theheartofinnovation.org. That's theheartofinnovation.org. Once again, here's Emmy Award-winning journalist Kim McNicholas and interventional cardiologist Dr. John Phillips. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I am in the Init Kitchen. Init is a food innovation platform, and the founder, co-founder, and CEO is Kevin Brown. And I also call him Chef Kevin, because how we met was really, um, he invited me to his house. They had a big investor dinner and I did a story on him and his passion for cooking when he was running a storage company. Boring. Now he's turned his passion into his profession with his new food innovation platform. And he's just a, a genius in the kitchen. So he's going to help us make our Thanksgiving meal healthier. Well, uh, great to be here with you as always. Uh, and hi, everyone. Uh, so we're, we're going to be uh, working on just a couple of the side dishes that uh, are really important to tradition. Uh, they're, they they you know just bring all the feelings back. Everyone rallies around them. But finding ways to you know just continue to advance them and and in this case make them a little bit healthier. Mm -hmm. And uh, these same ideas can then come into your everyday cooking for the kind of substitutions yeah. or different ingredients uh, that 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 can really taste great. Uh, and 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 you know sort of you can blend them with you know maybe what you used to do and it just gets a little bit better each time. Love it. 
So what are we cooking today? I think I mentioned a little bit in the beginning, but let's yeah. go through it. So we're going to make a couple of real classics. So we're going to make uh, uh, mashed potatoes, mm -hmm. but we're going to do a dairy-free version. And yeah, I'm anaphylactic to dairy as of this past year. So I need some new new tricks in my tool chest. So the, the trick is, you know, usually there's a, you know, a whole boatload of butter in there, uh, which, you know, uh, has its charms. But uh, uh, but what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be using uh, onion and vegetable stock and thyme wow. uh, and, and then blending those in with the potatoes. So we're going to you know bring in a, the same kind of mouthfeel, the same kind of uh, luxuriousness but uh, it's going to actually even have a little bit of that beautiful uh, onion. We may throw a little garlic in there too, mm -hmm. uh, just to, to, to make sure we got all the flavor, uh, but it's going to be a little bit lighter on its feet. Okay. So, nice. so we're going to do uh, another classic. We got the green bean casserole. Oh, the famous green bean casserole. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're going to uh, do that in a little bit healthier way. We're going to be using uh, uh, some diff different thickeners, nutritional yeast. Uh, so a couple of uh, little tricks uh, to help with that. And uh, then uh, you, you had uh, found a recipe for a vegetarian gravy. Yes. Yeah, so we, I can't use any sort of flour. And I know a lot of people who have heart issues have what's called the MTHFR mutation, which makes it really difficult for your body to turn food into fuel, basically. So, you know, you, you just want to get rid of anything processed, gluten, that kind of thing. Um, and so I can't have flour in any of my sauces. And I love my turkey gravy. Love it. And so we're going to show you a little trick so you don't need to use flour to thicken your gravy. And we also have just the basic gravy that you can do. And then I have an alternate in case you want a little umami flavor this holiday season. So stay tuned for that. Right. Well, so uh, wait, uh, wait, I'm wait. sorry, guys. What's mommy flavor? Umami. Umami. How would you describe oh, umami? umami? I umami. umami. Yeah, I, I believe uh, that this is uh, a uh, from uh, the Japanese uh, uh, culture, and it's sort of a flavor component uh, that's about the mouthfeel and the richness. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's that that difference when something just has that extra little bit of yumminess and you're not sure if it's sweet or sour or something, yeah. it's that. Uh, and so often it's a a really easy thing to uh, be able to to add just a couple little bits that just elevate the dish. Yeah. So They say mushrooms and truffles have enough. I mean, welcome, Marcia. Like if you have senses. Yes, yes, I love you. Not, I can never say it, but no, it's, but it's have, not sweet. We're going live again, actually, to Ohio. So we're doing a little remote cooking with one of our um, our fellow, what should we call sous chef, amateur chef, home chef? What should we call you, Marcia? Enthusiast, food lover. Food lover. And you uh, have literally had to change your diet, right? With some mm -hmm. artery issues. And you found a new passion for cooking healthier. And so you're going to share, what are you sharing today for your Thanksgiving? Well, I, I think I'm going to make some farro, but I'm also for today, I'm making fish. Um, and it's so easy. I can show you guys. I mean, it's not traditional Thanksgiving, but I'm having it on Saturday. And I'm also making sauteed vegetables. So oh, farro. Grain. Faro is a grain. It's it's uh, an ancient grain and um, it's good for you. <laughs> so this is just the package. So this is a and if you actually use, you know, yeah. Jeff Google, you can go on and you can find all kinds of farro stuffing recipes. You can add butternut squash. You can add cranberries. You can have all kinds of things. What are you adding in there, Marsha? Um, I did get a little cranberries. Usually I just... I just do it plain with garlic salt and maybe thyme, lemon juice. But I got a little bit of the things that you kind of suggested as well. Okay. And you can actually take that and stuff it in a, in a turkey, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll you know it'll take on the flavor the same as traditional stuffing. And uh, that, that's another great way. Uh, but just make sure when you are stuffing uh, a turkey uh, that you uh, are uh, uh, being very careful about the temperature because sometimes... Uh, you know, if you're not getting the inside cooked, uh, then, you know, you, you, you definitely need to cook it more. So, definitely. so uh, that, that's just a little tip when you're doing that. Uh, you can use a thermometer and just make sure that uh, the, the temperatures there reach the 165 kind of safe. Uh, safe level. Yeah. Great. Marsha, we're going to check back in with you. I'm going to turn it over to Kevin to get us started over here with what we're doing um, we're cooking what what first, the mashed potatoes? Yeah, so uh, we've got a couple things in parallel okay. because things take different amounts of time. So uh, what we've uh, started, uh, we've uh, been uh, roasting uh, some onions. 
uh, and uh, and thyme uh, with a little bit of garlic oil. Oh wow! And so we're we're roasting those in the oven, and then we're gonna you know be blending them to create this uh, really you know rich, uh, flavorful uh, complement to our our potatoes. Oh, so uh, so we've already boiled our potatoes here. So I wanted to get a couple of things going. So we've got some you know really just uh, you know delicious russet potatoes. Uh, boiled those for about twelve minutes. And so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to, you know, end up blending those with our hand blender and uh, we're going to you know, use our, our standing blender to uh, to bring together that that, uh, you know, kind of the, the butter substitute. OK, then we're going to bring it all together and uh, and and with a little bit of olive oil on top. So that, that's going to be pretty fun once our, our onions are done. OK, and what's next? Oh, I can smell. You know, there's nothing like smelling those russet potatoes and we got the organic russet potatoes. You know, for this and what do you got here so uh here uh we've been uh for our green beans uh the way that we're going to do it is we're going to start it in the pan actually and then it's going to go into our dish uh that goes into the oven and so uh what we're uh, doing here is we're starting to uh, unlock the flavor from yeah. some mushrooms uh from some garlic okay uh and then uh, we'll bring the green beans in here and this is where we, we bring some of our other uh ingredients like you know the you know xanthan gum uh, you know some some of the the other you know secret tricks uh, uh, and then it, uh, it, we're going to be using uh, almond milk today. So it's also a dairy, dairy free uh, recipe. And then we'll be uh, finishing that in the oven. Make sure when you do get your your almond milk or whatever nut milk, you know, always check the, the back of the ingredients and make sure that you don't have a bunch of sugar cane in there as well. Any sweeteners, you really want to make sure no matter what sugars can be hidden. Sugars have a variety of different names to them as well. And so right, there's, we, we, we've seen, uh, so my, my company does a lot of uh, personalized nutrition, uh, even for, uh, for health uh, you know, reasons, we work with, uh, you know, Roche for diabetes patients. So uh, it's, it's pretty tricky because, uh, you know, for example, uh, you know, they'll use different words like evaporated cane juice. Oh gosh. Right. Or dextrose. Is, that's the, another one. The, the, there, there's uh, there's many different, you know, many different ways that things sneak in. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, the other thing that's tricky is if people are dealing with allergies. So one example is if you have a corn allergy, mm -hmm. there's over 300 different chemical names that mean corn. Oh my gosh. So if you don't have a PhD in chemistry, you know, no idea. it's hard to, it's hard to, to look and see what's in it. So that's the name of our company in it. So we, we want to unlock that information, help people, you know, automatically shop, find the right things and, uh, and, you know, just, you know, nudge a little bit healthier. I was really Hello, frustrated. Everyone. As we continue on with this, I want to let you know, you're listening to the heart of innovation with Emmy award-winning journalist Kim McNichols and special guest Kevin Brown, co-founder and CEO of In It. We will be back right after these commercial breaks. Welcome back to The Heart of Innovation. For more on today's topic, go to theheartofinnovation.org. That's theheartofinnovation.org. Once again, here's Emmy award-winning journalist Kim McNicholas and interventional cardiologist Dr. John Phillips. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Today is our special Cook at Home Thanksgiving show. Kim and Doc and uh, Chef Kevin are hard at work. So, guys, uh, what have you been up to? What are you making? And I wish I was there because it looks really good. We got to get you over here. It's going to be uh, amazing uh, to uh, and uh, you know it's it's all about togetherness. That's what I love about cooking. It's about you know creating something that brings people together. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know you might have had a stressful day, but uh, if you can find a just a good happy place, chopping some onions, uh, getting some things ready, and it's uh, and teamwork makes it even more fun. So it, it's fun to be cooking here with Kim. So uh, what we're working on is we've got uh, three different components of a, a, of a Thanksgiving meal that we're, uh, you know, uh, using a little bit different ingredients to make it healthier, mm -hmm. but keep all of the, the same kind of feel and the, the flavors and, and what really, you know, makes the memories, brings people back. Uh, and so we're, we're finding those ways to just make the, these dishes a little bit healthier. And, uh, and these are, are tips and tricks that can come into your everyday cooking as well. Perfect. So what do we have going on next? Okay. So uh, we've been, uh, you know, sauteing our, uh, our, uh, our mushrooms and garlic. And so we're going to be, uh, you know, bringing this together with our green beans. So the, the trick here is uh, you always want to think about what flavors you're extracting. 
So in this case, uh, you know, heating the, the mushrooms and uh, garlic in just a little bit of oil really unlocks the flavor. And then we're gonna toss the green beans, get them started in the pan. Uh, and then we're gonna bring in our, you know, dairy substitute. So uh, as Kim mentioned, we're, uh, you know, going for a dairy-free uh, uh, a set of, uh, you know, of dishes. So we're gonna be using almond milk. Make sure it's unsweetened. We mentioned this before the break, but we wanna make sure that that's unsweetened. Check the ingredients, that's really important. And, uh, you know, texture is one of the really important things yes. uh, with cooking and uh, it sort of sometimes it signals that, that this is a luxurious flavor, mm -hmm. you know, so something like butter has a certain feel, but we can achieve that in different ways. And so one of the, the fun tricks uh, Kim uh, cooks with this uh, quite a bit is a xanthan gum. So that's a little bit of a thickener. So we're going to bring in our dairy substitute. Uh, we're going to you know thicken it up a little bit uh, in the pan, reduce it just a bit, and then it's going to go uh, into the oven to finish. So we're going to have a, a, a nice... Uh, classic, you know, green bean casserole uh, that uh, brings in some of these flavors. That's the same thing when it comes to the gravy. So really simply, and I'll maybe making a little bit of the gravy in and give you some additions to make it more vegetarian and, and fun and that umami flavor in a moment. But he was mentioning the xanthan gum, which is why I want to just go over the gravy really quick, because it can be really simple. You just need... Um, Turkey stock, which is really hard to find, but Kitchen Basics has one. It doesn't have any hidden ingredients or any other gluten or anything in it. It actually says it's gluten-free and no MSG added. I'm allergic to both, both of those, so that's key. And that's in a lot of uh, these stocks and broths and things like that. So make sure you get a more of a pure one. Add the xanthan gum, and it just takes a pinch, and you put it in the blender and voila, you have turkey gravy. And then you can just flavor it as us usual, adding a little Mrs. Dash, adding you know a little bit of pepper, adding a little bit of garlic, whatever you desire to make it a little bit more flavorful. I think that that's really key when it comes to the gravy. Hey, Kim, is that kind of like creating a roux? Yeah, there, there's definitely similarities there uh, where we're using a different ingredient than the flour, right. for example, or the butter. Uh, and, but it's the same, you know, how do you get that same... Uh, flavor, you know, sort of, uh, and, and the umami that, that sort of, uh, the, the feel to the food. Yep. Okay. So are we going to start with the green bean casserole over here? Or are we yeah. So the potatoes? what I've just done is I, I, I just, I uh, got the, the green beans in our pan, uh, okay. with the garlic and the mushrooms, and then we're going to be bringing in, uh, you know, the, the, uh, xanthan gum and a little bit of the almond milk once it heats up a bit. And so we're going to toss that and it goes into the pan and into our oven. Perfect. Should I go ahead and get that xanthan gum started with the absolutely uh, with the blender? Absolutely. So make sure cover your ears because uh, you know we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit. Just go ahead and you know what we don't measure here. We literally just pour. So it's all about feel. I know it's not the the best thing with the xanthan gum. You don't want to pour the milk. You can you can probably you can pour um, the unsweetened you know cashew milk here. We'll, we'll, we'll make it plenty. There we go. Um, and then I just put, you know, literally just a sprinkle of it. And I actually add a little bit of nutritional yeast, which I have over here, because nutritional yeast is a really great way to make things a little bit cheesier, dairy free. Um, it also gives it a little bit of that umami flavor. You don't want to use too much. And especially if you have any sort of um, in, you know, digestive issues, that's probably not the best thing to do, but I'm going to blend this really quick. Starts to thicken you, I know you can't see it, but it starts to thicken in there. And we're just going to add a little bit more just on how much, you know, liquid you have in there. Um, you can just add a little bit more. As I said, I just kind of sprinkle a little bit here so, and there. Kim, Kim, you're really just kind of looking at the consistency and the viscosity of it to figure out how much more you need to add, right? Exactly. I mean, I think that's really important. And everyone likes it different. So you just have to, especially your first time using it and trying this, you have to play with it and see what feels best for you because for everyone, it's really different. Well, one uh, one uh, quick rule of thumb, uh, when you're baking, it's really pretty important to get the 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 ratios right because uh, that's more of a you know a chemistry uh, exercise. But uh, you know, for many things, when you're in the kitchen, I get kind of stressed out trying to follow the letter of every you know single yeah. ing you know, ingredient and instruction. And so uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you can uh, just you know kind of go by eye 
and, and, and try it out. And if, if it's not perfect, you can add some more or you can uh, dilute it with something else. So uh, it, it's it's all uh, you know sort of about that journey and uh, and having some fun and finding some things that really taste good. Yep, exactly. And I know we need to go to break. We're going to blend this just a little bit more. And when we come back, uh, I think this will be thickened. I'm going to leave it to my producer to sign us out just to break. Hey, everyone. I hope you've been enjoying this wonderful moment here on The Heart of Innovation with Kim McNichols and special guest Kevin Brown. We will be right back after this commercial break. Keep holding on to your stomachs because they're going to show you a wonderful meal that is being prepared just for you. Welcome back to The Heart of Innovation. For more on today's topic, go to theheartofinnovation.org. That's theheartofinnovation.org. Once again, here's Emmy Award-winning journalist Kim McNicholas and interventional cardiologist Dr. John Phillips. Welcome back, everybody. And uh, we are truly cooking with gas here. Um, Kim and uh, Chef Kevin have uh, their... uh, uh, so sides working here and before we get back to them and see where they're at we're gonna reach out to marcia marcia what uh what are you crafting for us there well right now i have i just sauteed some mushrooms like like the kitchen in california i love mushrooms and i was gonna put those in my um faro something i did want to say is if you use fresh mushrooms you really don't want to rinse that will absorb that water and you want them to absorb whatever flavor you're really cooking with, it's best just to take a towel and just knock the dirt off. And so I'm actually making mushrooms twice because they're a powerhouse and they have protein. So I love mushrooms and they're not fattening. So that's what I've done. And the farro, I wanted to say, um, I'm using, oh, I just spilled one cup of farro and just a little less than two cups of liquid. So usually use chicken stock, but I'm single and I'm cooking for one today. I don't want to open this, you know, and waste it. So I just use water. Yeah, you know, my spices and my garlic and that will be good. So the first thing that you do with farro is you want to soak it or not, maybe not soak it, but um, rinse it. And it'll release a lot of, I'm not really sure what it releases, but it looks like powder. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so anyway, I rinse mine and it's here in, in my colander. Now I'm going to start boiling my liquid and I'm just going to cook it for about 20 minutes once it's boiling. That's it. Fantastic. Looks Thanks. looks wonderful. That does look Kim delicious. Kevin, Marcia, that is amazing. How, and we are, are going to, yeah. yeah. We have some green beans. We we talked earlier about we sauteed the garlic, some onions and mushrooms and, and such. And now he's put the green beans in there, sauteed those as well. And now we're going to finish up um, prepping this green bean casserole that I think even the kids are going to love. You know, uh, the, the, this is a fun one because it's got a lot of the elements. It looks similar. It, it's going to feel similar uh, as you're eating it. Uh, but now the, we've got the almond milk, the garlic, the, the mushrooms, all of that delicious flavor. And so we, we brought that together uh, with a little bit of xanthan gum. So you can see it's sort of thickened up. You, you might be you know, uh, mistaken uh, that hey, that could be cream or that could be yeah. butter. But uh, we've got a, a really healthy version. And we're yeah. just going to move it straight into our casserole. Uh, uh, even dish. added a little bit of nutritional yeast just to make it a little cheesier for especially for kids. Um, but don't use too much of it. Just a little bit goes a long way. Kim, can you okay. oh, just this... explain to us the nutritional okay. yeast? Like, why does it have a, why does it give you that cheesy texture? What's exactly in that? That's actually a good question for uh, Chef, Chef Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm actually, I'm not really sure what makes it. Um, nutritional yeast, I think, just on its own has a cheesier flavor. So okay. that's hard okay. to explain. And there, and and part of it, a big part is texture. So people, you know, uh, think about what flavor components. But one of the big pieces is that texture. And you know, one of the fun things is you can sometimes have a texture contrast where you have something that's really creamy, but then you have a crunchy component. Yeah. Like some, you know, some roasted nuts or something that you throw on top, and it just it it gives a little bit of a surprise, makes it more interesting to to chow down. Yeah. And what do you got here? Okay, so we, we've uh, finished uh, sauteing or actually uh, uh, baking our onions with thyme. And so we're going to be bringing these together in the blender. 
uh, and uh, we're going to be uh, adding some uh, vegetable stock, and then we're going to blend this together with our potatoes. Oh my gosh! So this is going to be the alternative mashed potato, and this is going to have so much flavor. If you could just imagine the the smells that we're smelling, and then translating that into the taste, it is oh my gosh! And listen to that. So that that's that's the the sound of flavor. Uh, <laughs> so. Is. So we got uh, some just some beautiful chopped uh, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, you know, my uh, uh, amazing co-chef. Yeah. <laughs> he taught me how to chop, chop effectively. <laughs> well, it's actually I, you know, one of the things is uh, is safety. And so, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I actually taught the knife safety class in Boy Scouts. <laughs> so <laughs> really? uh, I, I, I believe in it. And so uh, the, 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 the rule is uh, as you're cutting and you're putting force, always have it away from you always out of the way from your fingers. And if you're holding onto something, you can tuck your fingers in a little bit, kind of use your fingernails. And then if the knife, you know, somehow slips over, it's, you know, it's getting you in the fingernail as opposed to uh, on the skin. So uh, th those, those are always uh, important. You don't want to have a little medical emergency in the middle yeah. of your uh, party. Yeah. I've even seen those on the food network though, too. Oh, so yeah. they, they, even they to the best of gloves. Them. Okay, so we're gonna get the blender going with- Yes, we are. So we've got uh, our onions. Uh, and a time mixture here. So we're going to bring this into our blender. And then, okay. uh, you yeah, know, we're going to also be adding just a little bit of vegetable stock. So it's going to, you know, come together with the, the combination uh, to have a really nice consistency. Vegetable stock or vegetable broth? Uh, this will be a vegetable stock. Vegetable stock. And uh, so th this is unsalted. So, uh, you know, it's important to understand, uh, you know, if it's a salted one or an unsalted one, uh, uh, you're, you're going to do something different for seasoning. Yeah. We'll season this a little bit with a little bit of salt not too much, and some black pepper. For those of you sensitive to salt, you can use, there are different flavors now of Mrs. Dash, and it just adds a whole bunch of different herbs and whatever that give you a little bit of that salty flavor. Okay, cover your ears. Here we go. Amazingly, we can't hear that. That's the turbo. <laughs> I love that. So you can see uh, even just on the side of the the blender here, uh, this you know beautiful uh, sort of it sticks to the side, you know just like your butter you know would in your mashed potatoes. Uh, it's it's going to really fill that kind of uh, role. Yeah, it looks really creamy, and I can just oh I can only imagine the flavor of it because the smell is just so good. Okay, so, so we've got another you know uh, you know not very expensive but really handy uh, kitchen tool we're going to be using, which is our our hand mixer here. And so what we'll do is we'll be, you know, uh, mixing up our potatoes. So I, I you know, boiled our potatoes, drain the water, and it's, uh, you know, ready to go, still in the pan. And so we're going to, you know, uh, blend the potatoes a little bit, and then we're going to bring in our mixture, and then that's going to give us that that really rich, luxurious, uh, you know, mashed potato feel. Mm, I love that. Okay, so we'll get this going. Yeah, this is uh, pretty easy. You just uh, kind of press it down on what you're doing. It takes a, a minute or two, and uh, you can really start to get a nice consistency. Some people like a little bit more rustic potatoes, mm -hmm. where there's still some some chunks left. Okay. Some people like the really whipped uh, version. So you can you know you can even try different versions. Uh, we're also going to bring a little bit of garlic into this, uh, just to uh, give it a little bit more of that uh, you know sort of a, a little bit more interest. So when you do that, do you put in garlic powder or do you put in minced garlic or? Uh, yeah, yeah. So usually I'll do sauteed garlic. Oh. Uh, but also another thing I've, I've been uh, buying is crushed garlic. Uh, there's a little too. And it's really convenient. So if you don't have time to, you know, to, you know, find all your garlic and break it down and chop it, you can just put a little squeeze in there. Um, and, that's and, a good tip. And so I'll, I'll actually use some of that because I, I, th I think it's a really, you know, it's an easy way to, to get there quickly. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> It looks delicious, doesn't it? I mean, it looks amazing. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like it might be time for break <laughs> or to eat. Okay, so we're we're bringing in our uh, our uh, onion, uh, thyme, and vegetable stock, and so you can see it. Uh, it looks already pretty luxurious. Oh, even yeah. before we have, uh, you know, brought it together. I'm going to bring a little bit of our our just our garlic in here. I love that little cheatery. So you don't have to, I don't know if you've ever had to chop garlic, but that just, there's an art to that. Well, you know, it's funny because, you know, people you know uh, say, well, what what kind of a cook are you? And, and my first question is, well, what day of the week is it? 
right? Because on a Tuesday and you got soccer practice and all that, uh, exactly. That that's that's trickier. But if if you if it's date night on a Friday night, maybe you're you're gonna you know do things a little differently. So uh, the, the, these are all of the little things. Thanksgiving is a, a a very you know sort of a, a special day, so you'll probably be spending a little bit more time. But you got to pull off a lot of dishes, so you know never be afraid to to use some some good shortcuts uh, if if you know if they don't have a lot of health baggage. A lot of times, if you get something canned, you really have to look at you know how much salt yeah. you know, is coming with it. So there, there, there's some of these kinds of things that you just want to be aware of. But uh, for and us, and we uh, are going to make sure you are aware of these as we come back from this commercial break. You're listening to the Heart of Innovation with Tim McNichols and Dr. John Phillips. We will be back. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to the Heart of Innovation. For more on today's topic, go to theheartofinnovation.org. That's theheartofinnovation.org. Once again, here's Emmy Award-winning journalist Kim McNicholas and interventional cardiologist Dr. John Phillips. Happy Turkey Week, everybody. Our show is about to be over. They're still cooking. Guys, uh, we're wrapping things up here. Uh, we're, uh, you guys ready with your um, um, specials here? Is the yeah, we, we got done? a couple we eat? We got a couple things to show you. Yep. So, uh, you know, we, we, you know, you saw just uh, how, how simple and straightforward it was. Here's our, uh, our uh, mashed potatoes uh, and with, uh, you know, the, the non-dairy. And so we've topped that with some parsley and a little bit of a uh, nice olive oil. Really, I'll make sure it's cold pressed, extra, extra virgin olive oil, early harvest is if you can. And I bet it's absolutely delicious. But I also want, I showed you the gravy a little early on. It was just some turkey stock. Um, low sodium and gluten-free with a little bit of xanthan gum to thicken. And then I'm adding just to make it a little bit more umami. Um, and you can do this just with vegetable stock. So if you want to make it vegetarian, you can just do it with vegetable stock, but you can add some sauteed mushrooms, garlic, onion, thyme, and you can mix it in. It adds a little bit of extra texture and flavor to it. And then to the umami we talked about, adding a little bit of tamari in there as well. And then one more thing I put in it is I add just a little bit of, of vegetable stock. Um, and then you stir and you have this delicious gravy. And as I said, if you want it to be vegetarian, just go ahead and use all vegetable stock in there. But it is absolutely delicious. And you don't miss the flour and the butter and everything else um, for your Thanksgiving meal. Well, I brought you a spoon, Kim, so we can try some of the potatoes. You can maybe uh, get are, a little on there. Are we going to post any of these recipes on the web, or can can folks find Very these, happy. Kevin, at, at your app? Yeah, yeah, we, we can uh, we can post. Uh, I can uh, share the URL uh, and uh, for our mashed potatoes, we actually have step by step video. Yum! This is absolutely delicious. We need the green bean casserole, which we're we have done as well, and then we'll check in really quickly with Marsha before we head out. But because we've got um, about a minute left, bean about a minute left. If you have, oh, awesome. the, if you need a little crunchy, you can add some gluten-free breadcrumbs on top. Um, you can add some, uh, you know, just a little bit more nutritional yeast and whatever, or some hemp seeds and then stick it under the broiler and it's a little crispy on top as well. So uh, we didn't have time for a turkey, but I did uh, roast some, uh, some really delicious chicken thighs here. So uh, this is going to really turn into a, a very nice lunch. Uh, with oh, yeah. all of these wow. healthy ingredients. You guys Marcia, did you awesome. Up there? awesome. We have about 30 seconds. What do you got going on? Can we wrap it up? Can you show us anything finished? She is still cooking over there, so I bet she can't even hear us. So I think... Sorry. It may... Oh, there she is. One, I, Mine is not done. My far is almost done. I'll put in mushrooms, garlic powder, onion, maybe some cranberries, walnuts. I did want to say that for kitchen safety... Keep your knives sharp. The worst uh, accident is a dull knife because they slip and they will cut you. A sharp knife will go through what you're slicing. Great tip. That is a really great tip. So we're going to enjoy our Thanksgiving. We hope everyone enjoys their Thanksgiving as well. And Dr. John Phillips, I'm so sorry you're not here enjoying this with us. <laughs> no, save some for me. Can you guys send some over? Put it on dry <laughs> ice. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. 
the heart of innovation is for educational and informational purposes only, and advice and views shared are not a substitute for medical advice from your own supervising physician. Do not act on any information provided in this show without the explicit consent from your own health care team. If you think you are having a medical emergency, call your local emergency number or go to the nearest hospital or emergency room.